Welcome to the Real Life Overtime Podcast, the place where the members of the Real Life Ministry Sermon Team go deeper into the weekend sermon. Watch them as they unpack, unfold, and unravel the weekend sermon like never before. So fasten your seatbelts, hit play, and join us for Real Life Overtime, where every episode is an adventure and this sermon doesn't end on Sunday. Hello, Real Life Ministries. Welcome to our Overtime Podcast. And uh, as you know, we do this weekly. It, it's useful for our home group leaders. It's for our folks. Uh, we get a chance to go a little bit deeper uh, to deal with some of the things we didn't in our message. Um, and it's a great chance for you to see the other speakers at the other campuses as well. And uh, and so I'm blessed today to have uh, uh, Blake here, who's um, the, the lead person over at the Coeur d'Alene campus. Mm -hmm. And so he spoke this weekend over there. And Josh uh, is new on our staff, but he's actually not new. He was on our staff years ago. And uh, the Lord brought him back to us, and and so now he's at the at the Hayden campus, and he spoke this week and did an amazing job over there. So great to have you guys here today. You know, we started a series a few weeks ago called One, and we're we're looking into Ephesians chapter four, and we're talking about uh, uh, the fact that God's plan was to create a body of believers, a family, a a a nation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, uh, even a living temple with uh, Christ as the cornerstone and the apostles and the prophets as the foundation with all of us like living stones being built into this, this church, this ecclesia, this gathering of called out ones. Uh, we were called on to be one. And we do this series uh, in one form or another every year because we don't want our people to forget. People forget quickly. Mm -hmm. where we came from. The Jews did that. The Christians have done that. Mm -hmm. I've done that. Mm -hmm. You guys have done that. What mm -hmm. does it look like to be reminded of the commitments and the covenant we've made with the Lord and what he it, that he saved us for something, uh, from something, for something, and brought us together? So we try to do this in one form or another every year for our people, but then we also know every year new people come and they want to know what we're about, and we want to invite them in, but we want them to be very clear Here's who we are. Here's where we're going. This is what we're about. This is uh, this is uh, real life ministries. And so, in this series, we've been looking at uh, Ephesians four, which is where we get the title um, mm -hmm. for our message uh, series, and uh, it's it's one. And uh, if you walk through this, uh, we're called on to be completely humble and gentle, bearing with one another, uh, and it talks about. Uh, this unity of the uh, of the spirit in the bond of peace, and then he goes into there's there's a one, and he keeps using the term one, one body, right? Um, mm -hmm. One Lord, one faith, one hope, mm -hmm. one baptism, you know, and this whole word, this word one, over and over and over again. This week we were talking about the one <clears throat> faith, and uh, you know we we kind of. Uh, got together to create the message. We have a sermon team and we bring a collection of men and women together to go, all right, what is God saying here? And and we work through it together. So it's always pretty similar, but each of you guys do your do it a little bit differently. And uh, I want the other campuses to know what you guys are teaching and 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 how you're doing it and then what you, I want them to know what we're doing here as well and you know, we're one church in four campuses. So mm -hmm. um Josh, where did where did you go this week when in the message yeah. you preached? Yeah, so I started off by just kind of answering the question, what is the one faith? And so we went through, um, I really just took them to Colossians 1. It's like if someone ever asks you, what's the one faith you belong to? We're going to go to Colossians 1, mm -hmm. start in verse 15 and read on from there where we're going to see that through Jesus, everything was created in him, the, the fullness of God dwelled, and he became the, the sacrifice for our sins. And what does that mean for how we should live? And these are the core tenets of the Christian faith that if we're not unified in, like we really can't have true fellowship. So mm -hmm. what does it mean to be in the one faith? Like it means we all hold to those, those truths, right? We all agree on those truths. So I started there and then I transitioned to, well, now what does it mean to live as people of the one faith? So more than just knowing oh, what it good. is, how do we live as people of the one faith? And for that, I, we, I took them to Hebrews 11, right? Mm -hmm. The faith mm -hmm. chapter, but really camped out on the first verse 
because there's a definition we get of faith. I, I don't know if there's another definition in scripture like that hmm. of faith. And so I took them there and then just challenged their idea of what faith is and how does that actually look in my life. And so by the time I ended, the idea was that to actually be people of the one faith, living true biblical faith means that it, it starts up here, right? We got to think through and consider it. So I took them through a couple spots in Hebrews where we see that. But if it doesn't make it out here to your hands, it's not true biblical faith. And when it does make it out here to your hands, we as the people of the one faith get to truly experience God's provision and his moving and working in our lives. So that's kind of where I took it and then ended. I shared a few, few of my own personal stories of that journey as well, but it was good. That's awesome. I, I, I like that. Blake, where did you guys go this week? Yeah, um, I think your and I's was similar um, we, as we talked through it. And again, even, you know, when we did team on that, um, I talked about what is faith first and pulled kind of a few words from Old and New Testament. Uh, I like definitions. And so part of the conversation that we had was a man. That's the Hebrew used most often for the word faith and the word pistis in the New Testament and kind of built out those definitions, which I think helped gave a word picture for the discussion of what faith is. Um, more of an active living out mm. talks about through those definitions, it's more a building up of a cultivating and nursing type action. And one of the specific details on the, the New Testament version of the word pistis of faith uh, is defined as a constant profession meaning what is it that you're constantly making a profession of? Mm. Um, and so we defined some words at the beginning and then uh, jumped into Colossians as well. And uh, we asked ourselves three questions was the conversation we had. Number one, what is your faith in? Uh, number two, who is your faith in? And then lastly, uh, just a little bit of a, a word place, how do you faith? <laughs> Which is intended to lead to action, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and we had walked through those pieces and we got to show the difference between, you know, do I believe the gospel message of Jesus? That's what my faith is in. Like you said, yeah. Colossians, Paul says that this is the gospel message of which I have become a servant yeah. of. And so there's no other gospel, there's no other truth, um, which led itself to say, who do you have your faith or your belief that you're building in? Is it Jesus? And yeah. we took that answer or we asked some other questions like, or is it in myself? Mm -hmm. is, is my faith based on how, you know, I, I, I invest in, is that myself? And then we kind of tied it all together with an actionable belief, mm -hmm. um, which I think is mentioned multiple times, but you know, most commonly quoted is that a, a faith without action or works is a lifeless, non-living, non-biblical faith. Yeah. And so how do you actually, James too. Yeah. James too, how do you actually live that out? And we had a lot of reflective questions in the fact of, you know, what is it that you say, but what would, what would your spouse say? What would your kids say? What would your schedule say? Based on all the definitions of faith, is this a faith that you believe in that's lived out by how you are? And then the last part that we tied it to, um, which you have, have taught very well on over the years is we went into Jude. Um, and how he ties it back to say there is a faith or the faith that has been delivered once and for all that mm -hmm. we get to look back upon. So we don't get to change it. We don't get to make it up. We don't get to, yeah. you know, or there, when we're in seasons of feeling different or having experiences that would lead us off of that, we have a faith that's been delivered in the Bible that we believe is God's word that's living and active from Timothy that we are to contend for that we are to watch our doctrine and life closely for. And so it was who and how, and you know, what is it that you believe is faith in your life? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, what I did was um, uh, I, I looked at the uh, difference between Ephesians two, which says you're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. And then Ephesians four, which says that there's one faith. And the different uses of the, of the Greek word there, uh, in Ephesians 2, you're saved by grace through faith, is the equivalent of John saying, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not yeah. perish but have eternal life. So there is the gospel trusting that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior, and the Lord. But then when you go to the faith in Ephesians 4, uh, now you're talking about more than just the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're talking about... What does Jesus say about the righteousness, uh, about truth, um, 
And so I, I too went to Jude where he says, we're to contend for the faith, which was once for all entrusted to the saints. Then he goes on to say, because some men have secretly snuck in amongst you. And, and uh, he talks about the, that they were making faith, uh, 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 which gives you grace, hmm. uh, uh, believing in Jesus that he's the son of the living God, which gives you then grace as a license to sin. Mm -hmm. And so in that passage, there's obviously a a faith, an introductory, I believe in the gospel, then a way of living that is expected for a Christian, which is why, you know, Jude says you're sinning. Well, the Bible gets to define what sin is. You have a license to sin. What people want to do is they they want to give an excuse for sin, or they want to redefine what mm-hmm. a sin is so they can do what they want. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I went to 2 Timothy, all Scripture is God breathes, right? But before that, it says the Scriptures have have uh, made you wise into salvation. There's the the gospel, but all Scripture is God breathed, and it's used for training, correcting, rebuking in righteousness. So it's not just the Scriptures point to salvation in Christ, but the, the scriptures point you to what is right and what is wrong in God's sight. And so um, just walking through the importance of us holding to the faith in 2,000 years, people have redefined the faith, have redefined righteousness. And in our call, in you know, we're trying to, the series is all about making us one. Mm-hmm around what the scripture says, because there's so many versions out there of what these words mean and what Christianity is. And, and, uh, there's so many churches that, that, uh, um, you know, if I, I use the example of, uh, not all Lutherans, but many that call themselves Lutherans or Methodists, if John Wesley or Martin Luther were to see what these folks were teaching now, yeah. It would it would be like wait a minute you know no the Bible says this is you know and there's there are churches and again not all there's there's Bible believing Methodist churches and there's Bible believing Lutheran churches in many ways but what does it look like to be you no know, we're going to go back to a two thousand year old text that's been protected that uh, Jesus said heaven and earth will will disappear my word never will. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it look like to go back to this and then to find the words the way that this defines them, no matter what somebody else has done with them. And I can't judge people uh, who are Christians, but maybe define those words differently. What I can do is go, if I'm to study the word to show myself approved, I have to go back. I have to be careful Mm -hmm. to define words the way God defines them Mm -hmm. and live them out because this is our standard, right? The gospel is what, what, this says it is. And, you know, I love what Paul says uh, in Colossians 1. This is my gospel, mm-hmm. right? And it's it's one of the only places where he actually says, Galatians 1, he says, if we are an angel should come preaching a different gospel, let them be condemned. Yeah. But in Cla- but mm-hmm. in in Colossians, or that was in Galatians, uh, he says that, Galatians yeah. 1. In Colossians 1, he says, this is my gospel. So what is that, Right. And and so that's why we use that. But then he also says uh, in, in Colossians here, um, as you get down to this, uh, he goes on to say that um, uh, verse 21, uh, you were uh, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled uh, in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Uh, And so then he says, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a minister. Mm. So um, the gospel saves, but you you gotta have faith. Mm -hmm. And And here's what he's saying. Uh, it, it, it's, it saves you if you continue in belief, yeah. right? So there's that, that word if there that's super important because, uh, you know, to Jesus's point, he said, you know, the seed lands on soil and some of it, the birds eat it, 
up and and some of it it sprouts up quickly but the sun mm -hmm. scorches it because it has no root and then in some it, it, it springs up and then uh, it's choked out because uh, the worries of life mm -hmm. and all those things take its place and and take the nutrients and the time and energy of your life away and so it's just one of many and and Jesus will never be just one of many right he's always first mm -hmm. it's the only place he can take because that's who he is he's first and last yep. and and uh, the Alpha and the Omega, he's the sustainer of life, and we're to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So then the point of that is some, the seed was received, and they bore fruit, right? It, Jesus yep. is an example of that. So as you start to, to go into this, um, this, this subject of the gospel and then righteous living, um, this was once for all delivered to the saints, and both were included. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, what does it look like for us as a church to go, this is who we are, this is what we are, this is where we're standing no matter what, and we're going to do it together. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have our membership class, mm -hmm. our leadership classes every year, our life groups, because we, we're bringing a bunch of people with a bunch of different definitions of words, uh, a bunch of different ways they've been taught in other places, and if we don't come up with a language we share, definitions we share, and work together, a house divided against itself can't stand. It becomes right. ineffective. It, it, it doesn't do what it could and should. It becomes divisive. We're using all our energy to fight one another instead of fighting the enemy. Yeah. And so and it's difficult in this age of, of division on everything. Um, that's our hope is that we would become one. Yeah. Well, even like, it, so, so one of the things I wanted people to understand is this idea of one faith isn't just in Ephesians, right? Mm -hmm. It's in Jude, but it's also just woven throughout all of Scripture. Mm -hmm. And every time we see one faith kind of pop up, there's always a command in there. There's always, always an imperative. Like either mm -hmm. you're going to stand firm in the one faith. Mm -hmm. or you're going to contend with the one faith, Jude mm -hmm. 3. You're going to see examine yourself to see if you're even in the, the one faith, faith yeah. you know? Uh, and then... Some will depart from the one faith, yeah. right? We're to preach it, proclaim it, all these things. But it's a thread woven throughout Scripture. I think summarized by Paul in, in Colossians 1. But yeah. yeah, we see it everywhere. Yeah, It's good. Um, one of the parts we had added on at the end was, I, it's one of the pieces there in Colossians 1 where he talks about how you're going to be bearing good fruit, mm -hmm. right, in, yeah, in yeah. every circumstance. And so the application of that, you know, something we invite people into often is the fruit of the Spirit is manifested, we believe, most holistically in relationship. So we're going to make disciples, we're going to do it biblical relationship. And so the practical application of faith is in relationship, mm -hmm. right? Bearing with one another is invited to, but it also is producing fruit, which is going to be the evidence of a person's faith yeah. or belief. And uh, as we had walked through, again, some of those definitions, it was very reminiscent, both what Paul's saying in Colossians and then even in his other epistles, that a faith is practiced with every capacity that you have, right? What, what do I think and what do I hope and what do I believe and how do I put that into practice, which mm -hmm. leads to your hands, which is very reminiscent of what we would say is right, the greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength in application and others as yourself. And so we talked about the unifying uh, approach or effort of the church is to do those things together. Yeah. A unifying faith is being committed to doing those things together. Yeah. When it, we like it and we don't, and it's easy and it's hard and in, in season and out of season, what does it look like for us to constantly profess, yeah. that's, that's part of that faith pistis definition, that our hope and our faith and our belief is in the Lord as shown by loving God and loving other people in relationship. Right. And so making some practical applications, I think is always something that's yeah. very helpful for me. So yeah. like, what do I do with that? And so the invitation for us is to walk that out, talk about it, think about it. But at the same time, as we're practicing that together, our faith grows. Mm -hmm. Then we go back to uh, the text that was great you just used is, am I keeping in step with the spirit? Am I in the faith? Where am I at? Yeah. Um, that is a practicable, actionable step, which is, part of the definition of faith. Um, and one of the small things that I had said about that too is in my own journey, you had shared some of your story, is that that was a challenge for me growing up because I didn't see the actionable part. Mm -hmm. I heard a whole lot about yeah. the what. It's this and it, you know, yeah. it's head knowledge and it's doctrine. Even the Timothy verse you had mentioned says, watch your life and doctrine closely. 
persevere in them mm -hmm. and you'll save yourself and your hearers. And so the disconnect between a profession of words or doctrine only or head knowledge only without an actionable living that of faith, that was a challenge for me. So yeah. our invitation was to try to do our best, knowing that we're not called to be perfect, but that we're supposed to, you know, give effort and do that together. So yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I was thinking, we, we talk about in Matthew 419, it's our definition of a disciple. We're following Jesus, that's the head. We're being changed by Jesus, that's the heart. Mm -hmm. We're committed to the mission of Jesus with the hands. And to, to apply that to this, the way you guys are doing that, it's kind of dawned on me, I wish I would have. Yeah, me heard. too. That, that's actually, man, I wish I didn't. I should have talked sooner, Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and the same thing. I mean, like, wow, as we're, as we're processing this, okay, so the head is the the gospel. I believe the gospel, mm -hmm. and there is the, what the God's standard of righteousness, right? But I talked about this last week in Ephesians 4, 1 and 2, the whole, uh, the Holy Spirit, bond of peace, mm -hmm. bearing with one another in love. That's mm -hmm. the heart. So maturity in Christ is not just what you know, and believe, but but it changes who you are. Yeah. So that's the being changed by Christ, you know, loving God, loving others. But then the hands becomes not just the what I don't do, what's righteous and what I believe, that the heart is I love you, but out of that love now, together we're the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Christ we talk about, yeah. that we now move forward with loving action. So so righteousness isn't just not doing certain things, mm. it's doing other things. Jesus was not just righteous because he didn't sin. Right. He was acting righteously when he saw the leper, mm. uh, when he ministered to the hurting. The early church sold their possessions and, give, and goods to give to whomever had need. Mm -hmm. It's uh, In the Old Testament, it was don't... Uh, uh, cut down the uh, your crops near the edges but with a second gleaning, so that people could come and and work, but also be taken care saying, of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and just the temple, there was food in the house of the Lord as people gave, and then they 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 bridged the gap by loving other people, and that's part of the faith too. When mm. you see believers caring for other people, that's living out their faith. You know, John said, how can you say that you love your brother and see him in need and do nothing? Yeah. You know, James says the right. same thing. There, yeah. There's proactive activities that minister the needs of others. Yeah, so with the where I took the, the, the topic is the fact that we don't have a blind faith. So I started the the message off with that that clip from Indiana Jones. You guys remember that oh, clip? Oh yeah. Throw the sand he's, out. He's yeah. trying to chase down the Holy Grail, and he comes to that chasm, yeah. and he's just by faith. He's just got to trust that he's when he steps out, there's something solid underneath him, mm -hmm. right? So I showed that with his chest glistening with sweat, all that kind of stuff. You know, I said that is not biblical faith. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're called to do. Like we have. Some of these people have family members who think we're in here drinking Kool-Aid, mm. just hoping and praying this is all true, right? That's not the one faith. That's not the kind of faith we have. We have good reason to believe the things we believe. And so I took him to like Abraham and, and how he had to leave his country, right? Mm. And, and finally, you know, God promises all these things through this heir that he miraculously gives him in Isaac. And then he asks him to sacrifice his one and only heir, mm -hmm. right? And, and it says in there that Abraham considered mm -hmm. that God was able to raise him from the dead. So mm -hmm. Abraham didn't just, go, God, I hope you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. No, he considered, what did he consider? The faithfulness of God all the way to this point. His ability to create. Yes. It gives him the ability to recreate. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Like he considered the faithfulness of God. And so I wanted people to, to go like, our God is faith worthy. And so even in our own lives, like we have, we have the scriptures, so we don't have to go at this blindly. Yeah. Over, over 24,000 fragments of manuscripts mm -hmm. that we can test over time, right? We can mm -hmm. trust this right here. Jesus was a real person mm -hmm. in antiquity. We, we know that, and that's undisputed now. Like we can trust things about our faith. And you also have seen God working in your life. So don't discount that, mm -hmm. right? And because he's been faithful here, biblical faith is, it reasons then that he'll be faithful here. 
That's right. so good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of that too. I talked about Joseph Smith and how, um, you know, he claimed that, that, uh, the, the scripture had been lost and, mm -hmm. and we're warned in the old, in the new Testament, you know, contend for the faith once for all delivered. Right. Yeah. Uh, if we are an angel from heaven should come, Paul said that, you know, uh, we're warned over again, false teachers are going to come and they're going to say they saw things and dreams and, you know, but they're disconnected from the head scripture says. So when Joseph Smith comes along and he says, um, you know, the, the word of God's been lost. Mm. So God's chosen me to, <clears throat> to cr go back and give a bit, you know, his Joseph yeah. Smith's version. You know, um, Jesus said heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. So, you know, and we have, and that's not only spiritually uh, biblically incorrect, but historically we have 2000 years of copies of copies of copies that go all the way back and we have letters written from Christians, you know, writing yeah. scripture and passing it around. So he's not even, he's not historically factually true. And he is changing the gospel and he is adding to, to things. Yeah. And so the faith once for all delivered, we have it to your point. It, it, it's accurate. It's based on fact. It, you know, if you go back to the analogy of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the movie you're talking about. Oh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Well, yeah. he steps out first and then he jumps back off. Then he takes rocks and throws it across yeah. and then he walks, right? Yeah. Whereas um, for me, God gave us rocks to throw across, then we can step. I don't right. have to <laughs> blindly jump out and oh, then, good. you know, yeah. that's yeah. that's more of a, you know, sort of a, a different way of looking at things. It's like, no, considering it, looking, is there a good reason there is? And most people who say, there isn't, have never looked for themselves. Right. right? And honestly, because yeah. I don't think they want to. Yeah. But uh, I think, guys, what we're really trying to do is prepare our people. If the Bible says that in the end times, people will be lovers of themselves, proud, abusive. They'll gather around themselves, people who will tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. There'll be false teachers and prophets, just as mm -hmm. there was in the Old Testament. In the future, they're going to be. The Antichrist himself is going to deceive uh, if possible, even the elect, Jesus said, it's so important that we get them back to the one faith, that they understand what the one faith is so that then they can discern what is false and what isn't, what is contradictory and yeah. what isn't. Yeah. And, and then, so th for each believer, that's important. But then for each believer, understanding how to protect other people by knowing the truth and to share the gospel. And then all of us to come together as one so that we can actually be the collection mm -hmm. of God's people working and serving in, in the world. Uh, and so there's so many aspects of understanding this that uh, I, I'm hoping in our life groups this week, uh, in, the, in people's walk, we've been asking them to read through Ephesians, that they're really digging deep. They're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to them by the word through his direct activity as, as he, he uh, highlights and illuminates this, knowing that the, the Holy Spirit never contradicts God's word. Right. The Holy Spirit wrote this. Uh, all, all scriptures God breathed, yeah. right? Holy Spirit wrote this. He works through it to help us understand and apply this, but knowing this well enough to go, okay, I'm not going to be deceived by high sounding arguments or philosophies of the world or spiritual forces that deceive by people who are ignorant and are unstable, uh, who want to create a license for sin, to wolves that are going to sneak in amongst the flock with, with, in yep. sheep's clothing. We're warned over and over again that it was given once for all. Um, even Jesus said, you know, go into the world, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age, right? And so the disciples went and, and preached, and, you know, Peter preached that first sermon, and he explained Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he said in verse 36 of Acts 2, when the people heard this, they were pierced to the heart, and they said, brothers, what shall we do? And, and Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Remember, he was told to go into the world and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, so you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you and for all who are far off, mm -hmm. for all whom the Lord our God will call. These, these passages, you know, then you see in, in Acts 2, 
the people who received that message, accepted it, were baptized, 3,000 in one day, and they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, yeah. to fellowship, to breaking of bread and prayer. Yeah. The word from the very beginning of the apostles were accepted as the word of God. And so at, it, when Revelation comes along, last book in the, in the New Testament, John, the, the last writer, closes with anyone who adds to the words of this book, the plagues in this book will be added to them. Anybody who takes away from the words of this book, their place will be taken out of the, tree, uh, of the book of life. And, and as you look at that, um, you might say, well, that's just for Revelation, except God knew that Revelation would be the last book. And I think that applies. This is a special book. It contains the gospel. It contains the true story of Jesus. It, it, it contains the Word of God, the hope of our future, mm. one Lord, one faith. Uh, uh, this, this is it. Mm. And so that's why we center on this as of most importance, not the culture. Um, and, and we test things. We aren't just born in this slice of history and somebody hands us a box called the church and go, well, that must be the church. No, we look at the box and we go, is that the church? <laughs> yeah. Is that what God said the church is? If it isn't, then then I want to be a part of his church. Where it is, yeah. yeah. So, hmm. well, guys, I, uh, I uh, love you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so thankful we get to do this together. Thanks for helping yeah. to prepare the message. Thanks for preaching the message. Um, thanks for preaching at, here at the campus this last weekend. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. Uh, I had to go to a conference, and so you preached here, and... And uh, glad to have you back. And so God bless you. And uh, Real Life Ministries, we want to be one. And I pray that we're growing at the head, the heart, and the hands level so that we minister to one another and we reach a lost world for Jesus one person at a time. God bless you. See you next week.